world-renowned molecular biologist and author Dean Hamer answer a few questions for truthwinsout.org regarding sexual orientation and biology. The first question, is sexual orientation inborn? There is more and more evidence that sexual orientation has a strong biological component. Some of the best research comes from looking at the genetics of sexual orientation. Just in the last three years now, there have been two very large population-based studies of twins that have shown that genes are the single most important factor in whether a person is gay or straight or somewhere in between. Um, those results have been replicated. They're highly reproducible. They've been done in different places, Australia and the United States. Uh, the samples are very large, and the science is really convincing that genes and other biological factors are very important. Dean, which genetic studies are you referring to? One was led by Ken Kendler, a very well-known behavioral geneticist in Virginia at Virginia Commonwealth University, using a large sample of Virginia twins. The other study was conducted on a sample in uh, Australia, and the lead researcher was Nick Martin. Our opponents on the far right like to say there's no quote, gay gene, therefore homosexuality is a casual choice. How would you respond to them? Um, people on the right often say there is no gay gene. They'll even cite me when I said there is no single gay gene. And that is correct, just as it's true that there is no height gene, and there is no eye color gene, and there is no hair color gene. All of those traits are controlled by a large number of genes that interact with one another, that do interact with the environment. But that doesn't mean that those traits aren't largely genetic. So there are probably many different genes that affect sexual orientation. We don't know what they are yet. We don't know exactly how they work, but there is very convincing evidence that they do exist. Can you tell us a little more about the recent biological research? So in addition to the genetic research, there have been a large number of studies of other traits that seem to be correlated with sexual orientation. This includes certain autistic uh, clicks in the ear, the length of different digits, handedness, and so on and so forth. And all of these are probably markers of underlying sexual development events that are important for sexual orientation. So they may not necessarily cause a person to be gay or straight, but they're related through the same biological pathways. I think the critical point is that none of these are choice, none of them are even learned. These are biological markers for something very deep that goes on inside you. The far right likes to blame mom and dad for causing homosexuality. Is there any truth to that? All of the evidence shows that there's nothing in a person's upbringing that causes them to be gay. Just like there's nothing in a person's upbringing that causes them to be straight. Um, there are non-genetic factors, but we don't really know what they are. The environment could be something like having measles when you're three years old. The environment could be the exposure to hormones in the mother's womb. Uh, it could be anything that's not inherited. At this point, we don't know whether or not the environment will include social learning and the like, or whether it will be completely a biological environment that we're talking about. Uh, that's perfectly possible. What we do know is that none of the factors that used to be suspected, like having a father that was distant or a mother that was too close, uh, playing too much ball with Sally or not playing enough ball with Tommy, uh, we know that none of those are important. None of them have held up to careful, controlled research. Focus on the Family says sexual abuse causes some people to become gay. Is there any validity to this charge? I think the groups like Focus on the Family are misusing the idea of science to promote their own cultural and religious ideas. Um, the idea that everyone who's gay was abused seems pretty ludicrous. I'm gay. I was never sexually abused. I just liked guys. And I think that the same sort of feeling are very common. Dr. Hamer calls on GLBT people and their allies to support science. I think it's really important that research on sexual orientation continue. We have to use science to counter some of these very harmful myths from the right. And I think it's really important that gay and lesbian people support this type of research uh, because that's absolutely essential for it to get done. For more information on the ex-gay myth, contact truthwinsout.org.